Greetings, everyone. My name is Michael Rosso. I'm with the Film Photography Project, and today I'm here to give you an overview of the MDECO EM5000 Reflex Zoom 8mm home movie camera. This is a home movie camera that takes standard 8 film, also known as double 8 film. Here at the Film Photography Project, we offer double 8mm film, super 8 film, 16mm film, as well as developing and scanning. And that's how I learned about the MDECO EM5000. A fellow film shooter sent some film into the FPP for developing and scanning. And when I saw the scan, I thought, what camera shot this footage? I just thought it was very well shot, very clean looking, and I wanted to uh, get a hold of, of the, whatever camera that was. So I emailed the customer and I asked them what camera. They said MDECO EM5000. I have never heard of it before. You know, you, you always hear about Canon and Bell and & Howell and all the other name brands you hear day in, day out. So by examining some pictures that were on eBay, I soon discovered that this was a camera I would like to own because although it's a hand-wound camera, meaning you do not need batteries to run the motor, it does have a CDS light meter in the camera, which makes it an automatic 8mm camera. Automatic 8mm camera, set it and forget it. Beautiful. Also has the option of setting your f-stops manual. Let's go over this camera very quickly. First of all, the lens. It is a zoom lens, an 11.5 millimeter all the way up to 33 millimeter zoom lens. The zoom is controlled by this stick on the lens manually. So it does not have an auto zoom. So what? No problem there. It is a reflex camera, which means that when you're looking through the eyepiece, you are looking through the actual lens, so you will have to manually set your focus. Right above the lens is your light meter, which I noticed the seller on eBay that there was a lens cap on the light meter. That was a sign telling me that this camera's light meter all these years have been protected from light. That's very important. So although the camera came without a lens cap, and whenever you're not using your light meter, you want to keep it covered because excess light, I mean, over the span of 10, 20, 30, 40 years, you can burn out the light meter just by having it exposed to daylight, day in, day out, day in, day out. So here is the light meter. You will set your light meter by dialing in your ISO in the camera. It's called ASA. ISO 10 all the way up to ISO 320. That is amazing and also gives you an opportunity to shoot just about any of the films that are currently available. And if you're like me, if you want to shoot 500T, 500 ISO, double eight film, I just set my light meter to 320 and let it go. This was a camera I bought because I wanted an automatic camera and I wanted to set it and forget it. And that's exactly what I did. And I got, I think, pretty good results. So here's your light meter. And although you don't need batteries to run the motor on this camera, you do need a battery to run the light meter. And that is right up top here. There is a compartment here that takes a button cell. You will need to uh, put a battery in there if you want your light meter to work. This is your wind, and you will wind your camera in order for the motor to run. Of course, it has, a, it has a pistol grip, which you could run your shutter here. If you wanted to remove your pistol grip, you can uh, activate your shutter uh, right here. There's a button. As you see, it pulls it down. Next to the shutter is a little um, turn lever. And that locks your camera. So I guess if you're traveling with your camera and you don't want the shutter to accidentally run while it's in your camera bag, that's a great feature. Here is your um, f-stops. And this lens goes from f1.8 
all the way up to F16. And this can be set manually. So if you're using the automatic light meter setting on this camera, you will notice that these f-stops, they, they will go up and down based upon what you're shooting. Up here, we have uh, the frame rate, which is how fast the film runs through the gate of the camera. The norm for regular 8 is 16 frames per second. There's a little red on the 16, so you select that. I stick with 16 frames per second, which makes my shutter speed 1 30th of a second. Wonderful. Next is your counter. This little guide shows you where you are in your uh, roll of film. Starting with a full roll and then going all the way up to the 25 foot. This takes 25 foot rolls of double eight film. Eyepiece on the back of the camera. If you remove your pistol grip, you will have a uh, port for your tripod if you'd like to use a tripod. On the other side of the camera, we have the settings for your light meter and right now it's on A for auto. If you do not want to use your light meter and you want to make this camera completely manual, you will take it off auto. Auto. Simply take it off auto and now you're in manual mode and if you flip the camera, the f-stops as you move it in manual, you can actually set your f-stops. Wonderful. So I'm going to use this camera in complete auto mode. Terrific. That's why I bought it. Here is our film compartment where you will load your 25-foot rolls of film. Let's, let's load this camera. This lever is your indicator that will tell you how much film you have left. It sits up against the take-up spool and moves as the spool fills up with film. Each camera, if you're buying a used camera, always make sure it comes with a take-up spool. This one did. I'll leave it out for now because I'm going to, because of the way this camera is, I'm going I'm to load it in a lickety-split method. I'm going to show you. Film is available right at the filmphotographystore.com. New, brand new, fresh color and black and white film. I do discourage you from shooting old Kodachrome that you could find on eBay. And I say that because it will yield you disappointing results. Why be disappointed? The only good reason for buying an old roll of film on eBay would be if you can get it for under $10, a great way to test load your camera. So let's do this. Now with your film, you have an emulsion side of your film. That is the duller side of the film. That is the photosensitive part of your film. The other side is the shiny base side. You always want your emulsion side to be facing your lens. Here's your lens. You always want the emulsion to face your lens. Here's my take up roll. Side one. Okay. Now, this should be done in very dim light, by the way. Okay, so here's your camera. Film roll is going to go on up here. You follow the arrows. It's going to go behind the gate. This particular camera has a little gate that you just kind of pull back. Follow the arrows to your take-up spool. So I'm going to put the film through the gate first being very bold. Then I'm going to put the film on its film post. There we go. Behind the gate. It is behind the gate. The thing to know is that when you're loading your film with this particular camera, the spools only fit one way. So never never force a, a, a roll of film in your camera any way, shape, or form. This camera was very easy to load. It kind of just popped in behind the gate. Now it should be terrific. Let's see. I always make sure I wind a bit. Let's see how we did. Great. So when you finish loading your film, which by the way should be done in very dim light, do not do it in super bright light like I'm doing right now. 
Now you will shoot side one of your film. Okay, when you're done shooting side one, you do need to flip your film. So with regular eight, also known as double eight, the concept is this. The film is actually 16 millimeter in width and you're shooting an eight millimeter picture on two sides of the film, a side one and a side two. You'll run the film through your camera once and then you will take it out, flip the film and then shoot side two. The film is developed in a lab and then the splitting of the film to create a normal view is done either by slitting the film, if it's a uh, film for projection, meaning a positive film that you're gonna watch in an old time projector, or it's done digitally these days for negative films for your editing file. So let's flip our film. Once you get to know your camera, you will actually hear the film run out and you'll notice that your motor sounds a little bit different. Now, every week you see me loading and shooting a new camera and I have to tell you it's a bit jarring because it's very important to get to know your camera to become very comfortable with your camera and then that's when the magic happens I don't really recommend buying 15 or 20 new cameras or becoming a hoarder like me shooting a different camera every week because then you don't really get that familiar with it so my goal of course, is when I see a camera or I see an unusual camera, I'd like to do a overview for you, for you folks who are watching who may have the camera or may want to pick up the camera. But I am going to settle in, decide which cameras I like best, and then I'm going to just shoot with those cameras. Maybe I'll do a second video, concentrate more on the content of what I'm shooting and less on the hardware. But it's very important to know your camera, and that's how you kind of get to love your cameras and start shooting some amazing, beautiful images. Okay, so I shot side one, what to do? Well, quite simply, we need to flip these rolls and it's not very difficult once you get, you know, once you get used to things. So this is your take up spool and now your film is on your take up spool. By the way, your take up spool will always remain with your camera. Very important to know, you need to shoot side two. Here is the original roll of film that the film was originally on, now it's going to be my take-up spool. So I'm going to literally flip, flip, flip. And in flipping, I'm going to do the same thing I did on side one. And this camera, I have to tell you, is very easy to load, which I love. It's a very easy gate to load. So literally, I'm going to put the film, following the arrows, of course, put the film behind the gate. I'm going to put my film here, behind the gate. Same thing, always emulsion facing the lens. And now I'm going to put my spools on their posts. Beautiful. Oh. Oh, don't panic. It's very important to not get the film sweats when doing this too. Just take it easy. It's all okay. You know, you may want to send away your loved ones, put your pets in a different room. You don't want to be disturbed when you're doing this for the first time, of course. So don't sweat it. This post, I have to tell you, this is the frame counter. It's a bit of pain, a bit of a pain. But we're going to work around it. Get my film onto my post. There it is. Make sure my film is loaded up behind the gate. Has to be properly seated behind the gate. Let's see how we did side two. Looking good. So you close up your side two. Now you will shoot side two, and then when you're done, you will take your, your roll of film out of your camera, keep keeping your take-up spool in your camera for next time, 
And that's really it for the MDCO EM5000 camera. Really, really pleased with the results of this camera. It was a lot of fun to shoot with. It was really great to be able to set the camera to auto. Auto. And just worry about my zoom and my focus. I didn't have to set f-stops. Terrific. When you're buying one of these camera, look for one from a seller that is in the box. Or make sure it has the lens covering for your light meter so you don't get a busted light meter. That would be like a, a sad day if you spend the money to buy a camera and have the light meter not work. Now, with cameras this old, I can tell you that the light meter may not be 100% accurate. Let's look at the roll of film I shot with this camera. And it was a real pleasure to uh, show you this camera. You can write to me, michael at filmphotographyproject.com. Help support the channel by subscribing to us. Also, please do check out our website, filmphotographyproject.com, and our store, filmphotographystore.com, where we sell regular 8, a.k.a. double 8, super 8, and 16mm film, offer developing, scans, the whole enchilada. Get out there, shoot a movie, have some fun. I can't wait to hear from you. Leave comments below. Talk to you soon. <laughs> Notte giorno di torno girando, delle belle torbando al riposo, ma ci sento a tuo cibo d'amor. Delle belle torbando al riposo, ma ci sento a tuo cibo d'amor. Non più vrai questi bei panachini, Cappello leggero galante, quella chioma, quell'orio brillante, quel vermiglio donesco color, quel vermiglio donesco color. Non più frai, quei penachini, quel cappello, quella chioma, quell'orio brillante. Non ti trai farfalloni amoroso, notte giorno di torno gerato, delle belle torbando al riposo, ma ci sento a tuo cibo d'amor. Delle belle torbando al riposo, ma ci sento a tuo cibo d'amor. Fra guerrieri po' far bacco, Grandus tacchi stretto sacco, schioppo in spalla, sciabla a fianco, collo dritto, uso franco, un cura casco, un cura turbante, molto nord, poco cantante. Otto!